Okay, I think we'll uh, we'll get things underway today. Welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Tim Rogers. I'm head of advisor migration. It's my uh, very big pleasure to join you again for our fourth and final masterclass in this series uh, for our BT Wrap to Panorama migration. Today's is a, a strong focus on training and reports and things that are available to you. And uh, in a moment, I'll, I'll pass over to uh, one of our senior training managers who would be familiar to many of you, David Giltrap. Uh, but uh, if I could just ask that everybody, uh, I think everyone's done that, has popped on mute. And if you can also just ask questions in the Q&A box. And I can see that, uh, Robert, uh, you have tested that, which is excellent. Well done. Test work. So, uh, yeah, if you could pop your questions in the Q&A box as we go. Um, we may address some of those throughout the, the course of the, today's session. Um, but any that we don't, um, we've got a panel of uh, myself, and, uh, and David, uh, and also Gary Burford, National Manager of Platform Development and uh, very strong on migration, as many of you would know from our previous uh, webinars and meetings with, with Gary, and also Jason Brown, who's uh, our Head of Account Management, National Head of Account Management on a panel today. So we should be able to address all of your questions as we have been able to in the past, and any that we can't get to from a time perspective will certainly uh, directly uh, respond to you via your registration details with a response to that. So thank you very much again, everybody, for your time and uh, looking forward to running through today's agenda, uh, which, as I said, focuses very heavily around the training resources available to you uh, and also some of the uh, the functional situations of uh, reporting post-migration, things you used to do on RAP, uh, how you actually do that on, on Panorama and Dave's going to take us through some, some wonderful screenshots. wrap clients to as part of our migration and also cover off opening new accounts which is of course very important and the digital consent functionality which of course is uh, it's a, uh, a functionality which sits at the dealer group level to to switch on switch off um, but for those of you that are part of dealer groups or self-licensed that do have that on uh, you can see the uh, the wonderful efficiencies that uh, that can actually create for you so uh, without any further ado, uh, David, if we've got you online, which I think we do, I will pass across to you now. So Dave Gilchap, Senior Training Manager, Platforms and Investments. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks very much, Tim. Uh, and again, thanks to all of you who've dialed in uh, for attendance in the Masterclass number four today. It's been really good to see the continued strong attendance at these sessions. And they've really been about making, uh, helping put you, your business and your clients in the best possible position to make the migration uh, a successful and a smooth process. Um, so a note from the outset, um, Tim did mention a, a training session. We probably don't have near enough time today to run a complete panorama training session uh, for you or even uh, go through in detail the advertised components of it. However, what I will do is look to some of the key components of your immediate post-migration uh, experience with panorama. So I'll call out some things to expect. Um, I'm going to talk you through some of the, the panorama screens you'll see as well, and I'll tie it in with a reference uh, to specifically uh, link it to, um, to migration and a linkage back to wrap as relevant. So Tim's going to wrap up later in the session and include reference to all your important uh, checklist uh, that you'll use uh, that will be crucial for you to keep close and uh, make reference to in, I guess, the immediate lead up to migration and then your post migration activities as well. Um, we're going to uh, make a strong reference to the training video library in our Panorama e Academy site as well. Um, that you can register for. I'll, um, I'll highlight these details uh, a little bit later again for those of you who may be joining us for the first time. Um, and these resources are where you can learn all about Panorama at a time that suits you um, and really take in as much detail as you require in the topics that are relevant to you. So uh, we'll, we'll cover all of that. So let's firstly consider your client reporting uh, post-migration. And while the names of some of the reports um, in Panorama might be different, or you might find them in a different location, the important point here is to note for you that the key client account information you had access to with BT Wrap will continue to be available on Panorama's con contemporary advisor site. So let's uh, explore a bit of that now. I might go uh, next slide. Thanks, Matt. Excellent, thank you. 
And um, while I don't expect you to read or take in the detail of this right now, uh, this matrix type table will be available for you in this presentation pack that you can get after the webinar as a handy reference document. So this does outline the key RAP reports, how and where you'll find and view them on Panorama, and also where some historical account data will remain available uh, with a read-only advisor wrap login that you'll retain, importantly, post-migration for a period, uh, I believe, of up to at least 12 months. So please take advantage of familiarising yourself uh, with this matrix uh, in the lead up to, and also your, your post-migration period as well. And just the next slide, thanks, Matt. Just onto the next slide, Matt. Are we able to do that? Yep, okay, great, thank you. So this is a sample uh, client account overview page you might see day one after migration. Same format as all accounts on Panorama, intuitively laid out. You can drill down for more detail uh, down the left navigation bar that you can see there and with the main sections being overview, reporting and transacting. So one thing you will note from the start for a migrated account is the text box in the, the blue uh, above the recent cash transactions. So there will only ever be 10 most recent cash transactions showing there for any account, but please note the text box there. So this excludes transactions before the account migration to Panorama on whatever the relevant date was. But note, to view all transactions, you get Go to the transactions page. So number one, you'll have all of your historical wrap account transactions, those before migration, and we'll consider this a little bit more in a moment. So how will a Panorama account be identified uh, as coming uh, being a migrated uh, wrap account as opposed to being newly opened uh, on Panorama? So if we go to the next slide, thanks, Matt. Excellent, thank you. And so by clicking into account details down the left navigation bar, this page will appear for you for migrated accounts. And you'll see the details here that I've highlighted. So you'll see the date initially registered on WRAP, the date the account was migrated to Panorama and the WRAP account or ID number amongst other relevant account details for the client. So let's have a look a little bit further now into the client's portfolio valuation reports, which will be all important. And if we can go to the next slide, thanks Matt. Okay, great. Um, and in this section, you'll find not only the, the PV, portfolio evaluation, but also tabs across the top where you'll see asset allocation, uh, a performance movements report between do, two dates, which was which was titled the portfolio summary in WRAP. And that's just an example of maybe some different report labeling that you'll see in Panorama. You'll quickly become familiar with that. And there could also be an external assets tab for investments account. So the portfolio evaluation will default to the most recent date, but you can importantly go back and look as far back as you like, including uh, prior to the migration date for the portfolio evaluation. So it starts with a high level, almost a helicopter view of uh, the portfolio for your client, and then you can expand out or change the view or perspective as, as required. So you'll see all of the asset types in this uh, section. Uh, for this one, you can only see cash and managed funds and as an example, but others you might see will be term deposits, listed securities, as well as asset types in Panorama's managed account capability. So of course, I'm talking there, managed portfolios, tailored portfolios, and you can see top right of screen, uh, the CSV and PDF uh, icons to download any report. And you'll see these options throughout Panorama as you become more familiar with it for all of the reports and pages that you, uh, that you visit regularly. So let's expand out now the cash section and a good moment to explore something new and I guess different to Panorama that was not on wrap. And if we can just go to the next slide, thanks, Matt. Yep, great. So here you can see we've expanded cash out and um, fairly intuitive there, all of the extra details to view with blue hyperlinks that you can click into to go into another screen. But I have highlighted the row there of uh, income accrued. And you'll see this also for listed securities, 
term deposits. And when those sections are also expanded out, you'll, you'll like I said, see, see this uh, accrued income. So important to highlight that Panorama uses an accruals-based accounting method or system as opposed to cash-based uh, accounting method, which was used by BT Rap and probably historically by most other wealth platforms. And I think the, the advantage here of using an accruals-based system is that Panorama can report income earned but not yet received. So that I'm talking about things like interest, dividends, and really that can reflect a more accurate and perhaps timely representation of a client's portfolio valuation. So it certainly can assist you during times that, uh, with your clients who've got listed securities where your client might query why their share valuation has reduced during a time when the stock has gone ex-dividend. Um, so some real uh, advantage there for you with Panorama. So let's have a look now at performance reporting. And if we can just jump onto the next slide. Thanks, Matt. Okay, so Panorama's reporting hub uh, will provide information on the performance of your client's portfolio overall and also the underlying assets as you'd expect. Now the first point to note for migrated accounts is you may see this note in blue text in the box at the top of the page so that you can see with this particular one due to the account migration to Panorama on whatever the relevant date is the total portfolio performance percentage figures for this account uh, are being recalculated. Now you may see that and further um, perhaps more relevantly um, performance percentage figures for individual investments will not be available for date ranges that include prior to migration. But important to be aware of you uh, aware of this that um, you will continue to have read only access to your uh, RAP advisor RAP login for a minimum of 12 months uh, following migration. So these details, if and as required, can certainly be accessed uh, for within your business and for your client accounts. And if we just jump onto the next slide now, Matt. Great. And uh, so for um, reporting for performance uh, commencing from a date after migration, you'll of course have access to the full suite of performance reports on Panorama. And highlighted there are the icons for comparison with widely used indices and benchmarks. You've got the access to before and after fees, a downloadable report, um, and also able to view performance with an interactive, I'm not showing it on the screen here, but there is access to an interactive on-screen chart with options to break the total performance and split that out into capital and income view as well. So really um, illustrative example of uh, reporting you can work with with your clients. Again, as I've mentioned, the full, uh, I guess, training course and um, covers all of this and more, and that's certainly viewable at any time uh, for further detail. Let's have a look now at transaction reporting. So we've looked at uh, portfolio valuation and, uh, and performance. Let's have a look at transaction reporting. And next slide. Thanks, Matt. So you'll recall from earlier, whereas the front overview page for a client account only displayed recent transactions since the migration date, all of your past transactions on the account right back to the inception of the wrap account, you'll find right here with all the all transactions report. In this section, you'll also find the cash statement and the cash movements report. And you can simply change the date range to obtain the period that you're after and then use the filter and sorting tools to fine tune. Let me show you what that looks like if we just go jump onto the next slide. Thanks, Matt. Yep. And you can see here you'll find the transactions filter tool and you've the ability to pin, really pinpoint transactions for a particular either investment type or you can drill down to pinpoint trade transactions, uh, expenses, corporate actions, payments, et cetera, exactly what you're after. And as you'd expect, again, uh, your filtered transaction list can of course be uh, downloaded in your chosen CSV or PDF uh, format. And we'll just move on to the next slide. And I guess while we're talking sort of more generally around reporting now, I must give you a quick overview of your Panorama Reports Centre. So this is the one location to request and download any number of the full range of available reports for a client account. 
Um, you'll see the specific message there that I've highlighted for you there for migrated accounts. So I can just read that out if that's not clear. Figures will not be available for some reports before the account migration date. So hence the date range for noted reports will be adjusted accordingly. And these being uh, account performance, portfolio movements, realised capital gains and also the fee summary. But again, I point to my earlier message. This information is certainly not lost to you. Um, so as and when required, you still retain read-only access uh, to your RAP desktop for at least 12 months uh, following the migration date. So you can also see on this page here, there's a summary pack there. And we know that many advisors really appreciate the convenience of this. And what that does is it combines uh, the popularly used uh, reports being PV, asset allocation, uh, performance, movements, and I think uh, transaction history as well. Um, all contained in a pre-prepared uh, report pack and ready to go. If you're after more bespoke selection of reports um, from the full range, you can expand the report category related to the reporting you're interested in. If we just jump to the next slide, thanks, Matt. Yep, and what you can see here is the portfolio report options expanded. Simply select the date range, the options you require, format for the report and download. It's as easy as that. And you'll also find sections for income type reports. So income, CGT, superannuation specific reports and also SMSF specific reports you'll find uh, as relevant for your client accounts. So I guess that's reporting post-migration. Hopefully that gives you a level of comfort with your new experience for those of you who really are new to Panorama um, and we're talking post-migration and the full range of intuitive and easy to read reports. Um, can you've really got that with Panorama combined with the uh, continued read-only access to your RAP login um, for your uh, pre-migration accounts. Okay, if we just jump onto the next slide. So we're gonna have a change a bit now. So in this section, what I wanna do is introduce a couple of key new processes that you'll be certainly familiarizing yourself with uh, in the early days following migration to Panorama. Those being, um, and Tim already mentioned these, opening new accounts and also digital consent, which is, a, which is really a core feature and function uh, within Panorama. And again, this is not a full on training session as such, but just an introduction to these processes. I'll show you a few screens for familiarization. And again, I'll be just sort of directing you to the e Academy Panor Panorama training courses for the full details on functionality and processes. So we'll start with opening new accounts. And if we can just jump to the next slide, Matt. So there's a few places you can instigate opening a new Panorama account. Most common one is the I'd like to drop down box uh, top right that you can see there and of course open an account. If you've not yet opened uh, a new account in Panorama, this will be a new process for you and probably your clients, but hopefully a good one that you, uh, you both uh, enjoy. Um, it is a single online application form completed by you for the client and an online and digital process for your client to review, approve, open and ultimately activate the account. So potentially it's an entirely paperless uh, process, even without a physical client signature. So a little bit like opening bank accounts that have been uh, around for quite some years. So opening wealth accounts uh, is now online and electronic with, uh, with Panorama. We'll just jump to the next slide. Thanks, Matt. So you'll be taken to a screen like this with a drop down uh, to select, uh, or firstly, the account type. Generally, you'll be selecting either investment or super, and then you'll have a look at, uh, is it the Panorama full menu or the more uh, compressed menu in the, uh, the Panorama compact offer. After you've done that, you'll actually come to a screen which looks exactly like this. This is for a superannuation account and you're presented with an idea of what to expect, the client information that you'll need to gather uh, in opening the account and you simply select start to proceed. So we'll just jump onto the next slide. Thanks, Matt. So you'll be presented with the required sections to complete the, um, the, the account opening. 
information uh, there will dynamically update depending on the account type being opened. This is a super account, so quite simply four sections starting with investor details. Um, if it's for an existing Panorama account, you could select uh, as such, say it's existing, and that will pre-populate their details. Otherwise, you'd select new and enter the client details yourself. Fairly intuitive to run through that. Um, one thing to point out is identity verification and AML requirements are all paperless and online. Another change over wrap, but a good change there. And instead, you will do the identification of the client, retaining verification on your own records or in your own files. You don't need to send that to BT at all. It is very intuitive to work through each of the sections. And as mentioned, we don't uh, near have the, the, the time required to show you each of these today, uh, but we'll, I will again refer you to the onboarding uh, clients training course in the Panorama e Academy to allow you to take in the full account opening or onboarding process. I will take the opportunity at this point to call out that uh, a mobile phone and email address is required to open a new Panorama account. I will note that we've been able to accommodate migration for accounts of clients that we've not been able to obtain uh, email and mobile phone for, and they'll continue to be able to operate as such with a, a paper-based or alternative identification process for these clients going forward. But that said, should these clients wish to move uh, to the move fully to the online and electronic version of operating with Panorama, um, encourage you to contact the Panorama support team and they'll gladly assist with, uh, with that. However, for new accounts that you'll be opening post-migration with Panorama, you will require email and mobile details for those clients. Once you've entered all the required details uh, in here, you'll select review application. Any missing or errant information will be clearly highlighted and you can attend as required. But if all is in order, uh, you'll get to the next step, which is submitting the application. So if we can just jump onto the next slide. Thanks, Matt. And this is a shot at the bottom of the next page, just before you submit the application for a new client account with Panorama. And you'll see I've highlighted two sections here for you. So online and offline account approval. Now by far the most popular method is online. And this is also the best way to quickly introduce your client to the online and efficient way in which Panorama operates. So this um, online account approval method uh, immediately will send an email to your client with instructions and a unique registration code for them to review and if all okay, approve and immediately activate the account. A quick and simple process that can even be carried out with a client still in your office. So uh, hopefully you'll begin to enjoy that process uh, very, very soon after migration. But that said, we know this might not suit all of your clients and perhaps there'll be reason for uh, maybe some of your elderly clients, less internet savvy, or even regional clients who might prefer an offline solution. Now, this doesn't avoid mobile and email details being required, but it does allow an advisor to print out the completed application form, have their client sign it, the advisor will upload it back into Panorama, and the account is immediately activated. So clients will have the, these particular offline onboarded clients will still receive an email with their registration instructions for online access, but it has allowed for the account to be initially opened and activated from a printed and signed form. So again, um, I mentioned online method is uh, by far the most widely used and importantly, it familiarizes your client with Panorama early on. But this alternative offline method may suit some of your clients, um, so it's, it's, it's up to you, maybe pick and choose the method which will suit your client. Again, full details on all of this account opening process, I'll refer you to um, the, the onboarding course in the Panorama eAcademy uh, training. Now, in the time that I've got left, I want to introduce another piece of functionality, and this is really at the core of the Panorama offer, and that, of course, is uh, digital consent. So if we can just jump to the next slide. Thanks, Matt. So Panorama's digital consent, as it says here, allows you to request consent from your clients for various transactions and account changes via SMS or email, and also includes the option to produce and attach advice documentation 
or an ROA. And uh, just next slide, thanks, Matt. And the panorama processes that digital consent can currently be used with, uh, as you can see on screen here. So adding new bank accounts uh, and BPAY billers, investment trades, corporate actions, moving to a sponsored or custodial HIN are some of those. Um, and importantly, we're not done yet. So I guess the digital consent highway uh, has already been built uh, with Panorama, it's already there. So we're already looking at future enhancements that we can make uh, to obtain a client's digital consent for, for updates or changes to advice fees, for example. So there's further changes and enhancements where you'll be able to really benefit from the efficiency of digital consent. I'll just give you a bit of a sneak peek at the functionality now, again, with the functionality really fully showcased in our uh, standalone digital consent training course on the uh, eAcademy site. So if we just jump to the next slide, thanks, Matt. So this is the screen as an example where you can add a new linked bank account for a Panorama Investments account. And you've entered the details as you can see here and then select continue and just jump into the next slide. Yep, so this pop-up will come and this allows you to select uh, the approvers. So who's gonna approve the, the uh, change or trade that you're doing uh, for the client, how you want to notify them um, by email, SMS or both, and also the expiry date for approval with some handy reminders or notification alerts that you can turn on for both you and your client in relation to the consent. You'll then send the consent to your client. They'll receive the message by your selected method and they can consider and ultimately provide consent on either their desktop login or the convenience of the mobile app as well, which many of you um, I've, uh, I've spoken with about. So it's intuitive, engaging functionality for your clients and super efficient for yourselves. Um, it also comes complete with reports for both your pending and completed consents uh, that you've got out with clients. The ability, as, as I mentioned, to uh, attach an ROA for investment type transactions. And also, if you're an X-Plan user, the ability to have consent records and advice documentations automatically uploaded daily to your connected X-Plan software. So it really can provide some great efficiency uh, uh, benefits for, for you and your business. Like I said, only a sneak peek at the functionality today, but hopefully that's got you a little bit excited, maybe want to explore a little bit more. Uh, you certainly can via the Panorama training portal. And of course, maybe speak to your uh, local BT contact or BDM about how digital consent might work in your office. Um, so I've just jumped to the next slide. Thanks, Matt. And I guess to close my section before handing back to Tim, just a recap of where all the great training resources that we've got uh, located for you are. And just jump onto the next slide, Matt. Yep. So this is your BT Panorama page or uh, training hub, if you like. So bt.com.au forward slash BT Panorama training. This is where you can register for and log in to the eAcademy training portal access the growing range of courses available for you and conveniently view them at a time that suits you. So please, if you haven't already done so, join the nearly 400 or so near users that we have taking advantage of everything the site has to offer uh, to assist you with migration, uh, preparation and really deepen your you and your business's understanding of Panorama. Um, you'll see as also as we scrolled uh, down the page, here, there's links to watch recorded uh, webinars on each of the course topics. I will also promote upcoming webinars uh, that we've got both on the cash investment strategy and also the listed security holding options available with Panorama. So these are both very recent functionality drops into Panorama and very important to be uh, for you to be across both of these. So the cash investment strategy being uh, a one-off or regular cash sweep, if you like, to assist uh, with ensuring your clients are efficiently invested into their underlying investments in a timely fashion. That's a feature over and above what was available on RAP. So I encourage you to understand how that functionality works and how you can benefit from that. And for those of you with uh, list clients in listed securities, Panorama's market leading range of three different holding options are well worth you being across as well. So you really can align to the needs of your clients there. Um, and of course, those options are the default 
nominee method and also a custodial HIN and for investment accounts you've got the option of a sponsored IHIN as well. So I encourage you to, to register for those and you can do that right now uh, in this particular Panorama tra training page and if we just jump to the next slide, thanks Matt. Um, yeah, so that's just, uh, we've got an example of the uh, the academy there. But if you go into that uh, training hub, so bt.com.au and forward slash BT Panorama Training, those cash investment strategy and the listed security holding options are available for you to register right now. And those sessions start from uh, next Tuesday, the 16th of February. Okay. Um, that's all from me. I will now hand back to uh, Tim. Thanks, David. Much appreciated. And uh, a whole uh, uh, raft of information as always included in those and those slides. And as we said, these sessions are all being recorded. So you can refer back to this session and have a look at the uh, slides themselves and also um, uh, get the web addresses and have a look in the uh, BT Academy uh, for all of those training materials, uh, a huge uh, supply of training materials and reference materials for the use uh, either individually or with a group in your uh, in your practice for training sessions, uh, for your structured training, etc. Uh, but please do uh, have a look through those. Got some good questions rolling in, which is excellent. So we'll, uh, we'll have some time to get to those. Um, but uh, we'll just kick on and I'll just run through for the next few minutes uh, just these final reminders for getting ready for uh, migration. And I want to just cover off the key points for you to consider and then share some insights that we have from uh, that we've gathered from our uh, from our advisors that were involved in our pilot tranche, successful pilot tranche in T1, uh, tranche one in December. So register for BT Panorama. So if you're not registered as yet, please do um, immediately and uh, uh, get online and do that. If you're a dealer group, uh, you can do that through intermediary onboarding, uh, which is a function for your dealer group manager on Panorama, uh, if you're registered uh, to get your advisors all up and running. And if you're an individual advisor, uh, you can do that uh, through your dealer group or get in touch with us and get the registration forms and get that organised. If you're a dealer group and you're not registered, please get in touch with us. Uh, let us know in the chat here um, in the Q&A or in any way, shape or form, and we'll get that happening for you as quickly as possible. Once you're registered, of course, with the various permissions that we talked about, and there's a, a snapshot of that slide there, but that is available in previous uh, webinars that you can access as well if you need that information. Then we need to map your F codes. So all of the existing business that you write under various F codes in wrap, we need to map those across and make sure that they match into your new Panorama ID so that all the clients uh, naturally flow, all the client account details naturally flow to the right place for you on the migration weekend for your relevant tranches. So that's important that you do and uh, please get in touch with us. And I would imagine that uh, everybody in this call has had uh, contact in some way, shape or form from someone at BT as we've been uh, very busily over the last uh, six to eight months contacting you, getting registrations and mapping uh, permissions across from RAP to Panorama ready for migration. And a final piece of the readiness puzzle in the lead up to migration is your client data. So as we said, there's a couple of forms of that. One is uh, you'd have data spreadsheets from us uh, that have been sent out to the practice champions that are nominated within your practice. And we need those back if you haven't sent them back, which completes just the missing data that we need to set up Panorama accounts for your existing RAP clients. And also just mobile phones and emails in particular, uh, if you could go on to the desktop for your existing clients and just make sure they're current because sometimes obviously we get details updated from our clients. We update CRM or um, our X plan or whatever software we're using in our practice, but not always the platforms underlying that. So if you could just check on those to make sure they're all accurate and then there'll be um, a far more positive experience, registration experiences. That's the detail that we'll use uh, to bring across uh, for their panorama registration on migration. Okay, so registration, F code mapping from RAP and client data, three key points uh, that you need to make sure that you've ticked off. Uh, how do you know that you're ticking everything off? Well, we'll have a look at this next slide. 
uh, in terms of readiness. Uh, sorry, we'll jump to that in a minute. The other one I just wanted to, to touch on again was just remembering those transaction restrictions, uh, not a lot of them and a very limited time beforehand. Uh, and I think there's a question in, uh, in the uh, Q&A around a, a, a transaction restriction. So we'll, we'll address that when we get into that one. But um, as you can see them listed there, a uh, short period of time uh, that's prior to the migration date, uh, which for tranche two is the 20th and 21st of March, uh, as previously communicated. Um, so that's the next one uh, coming along. Um, and you can see from there that you can work back from there in terms of uh, making sure that you've got all your transactions uh, required uh, in the system wherever possible uh, prior to that. Okay, Matt, we'll just jump to the next one now. Uh, and we talk about the things that are available. Uh, client communications uh, are very important to you, obviously, and very important to us. So what's come from us? Well, really, they get the migration announcement, uh, which is the SEN from us, which is going, uh, and that's, uh, that's a key document, which we've run through before as well. Uh, that'll be going out to them uh, for tranche two, actually uh, commences this week. So tomorrow is when uh, the some of the mail, uh, direct mail will, will start to go out for tranche two for those clients that are eligible. And uh, on Friday, we'll start uh, for those advised clients, uh, the emails uh, of the uh, migration client notice, um, which will be going out, which is the, the send significant event notice we've talked about before. So that is going out uh, this week to your clients. So uh, you've seen copies of that as we've previously forwarded uh, examples and copies of that out to you. Uh, so they'll be having that information. Uh, again, we talk about the uh, uh, client email templates that we have available on the website. You can just see a sample of that there on the slide in front of you. Uh, really important to get that out um, and have that communication prior uh, wherever possible um, and get a comms out to clients to say, hey, heads up, you're going to be getting this. Uh, and there's some data in there and information in there that you can use. Uh, and also prior to the migration weekend, Another good example uh, where the successful tranche in December were clear on their um, information out to uh, to the clients and letting them know. But we'll certainly be uh, communicating uh, post this migration notice to your clients for the migration um, post that weekend and getting that confirmation of successful migration out to them uh, in the days after that migration weekend uh, with the details around accessing Panorama, obviously with their registration uh, details, which go out to them. So, so a bit to, uh, to go, uh, very little from us um, and, uh, and a lot of support from you or for you um, to send uh, communications supplementing that uh, and uh, front running our communications to your clients uh, wherever possible. Okay, we'll just jump on to the next slide. Um, this is what I was talking about. So when we talked about the readiness and we talked about registration and F code mapping and data, the other key things which you need to, to tick off are really on this migration checklist. And this was developed in conjunction with uh, our pilot tranche um, participants, advice practices. And it really is the A to Z of all the things that you need to be across uh, both uh, pre-migration and also post-migration. And uh, as I said, uh, we've got a, a few snippets here that we'll share, uh, which are directly from um, quotes and bullet points directly from those practices as to recommendations to um, you all as to things to look at doing and be prepared for and clear for day one and day two after the migration weekend. Um, so that's after the 20th and 21st of March for tranche two initially, and uh, for that first week in terms of the things that they focused on. But this checklist is what they can effectively work from uh, and run through. So um, the key, key messaging coming through was to clear your diary for that first week of migration. So um, the practices cleared all uh, reviews that were scheduled for that week um, and made sure that they had all hands on deck um, they actually cleared any leave, so they had um, a full complement of their team on board for that first week post-migration. Um, and it allowed them to take the time early to familiarise themselves with Panorama uh, and also run through some key portfolio um, data checks. So general client data, uh, portfolio evaluation balances, pensions withdrawals, um, checking the data feeds were all mapping correctly. And the way they approached it um, generally was to um, have a practice uh, champion, migration champion, who was really project managing the migration for that practice. Uh, and then they would delegate those various responsibilities to individuals 
um, and have individuals responsible, for example, on uh, general client data checks. And they will do their checks, a number of random checks, and then report back. And that's how they collated and, and covered the various things that they needed to do. Uh, also, just checking that all the practice staff uh, and uh, and I, so that was the, uh, the the migration champion in this instance, uh, was set up with the correct panorama role, linkages and permissions. And that's that uh, hierarchy structure with the registration that we've talked about. Um, so if you're unsure there, please get in touch with us and we'll make sure that uh, it's set up the way that your practice operates uh, because panorama very flexible uh, and, uh, and enables it to change and be structured so that it works with the way that your advice process works. Uh, and very clearly, uh, day one, day two, they were checking the clients had received their panorama registration email. What they did was actually develop a, uh, a, an email which went out on the Monday uh, post migration weekend to all of their clients, um, advising them that the migration had been successful and that they would very soon receive a communication from BT which would contain their migration details, their registration details. Um, so that when clients got that, they were clear on, uh, on what that was, they were expecting it. They are also very clever in saying anything, any questions you have with regard to your Panorama registration, please contact BT, not us, uh, which was the right way to push them towards us to help with any queries on that. Uh, and also explain that uh, where they had multiple accounts, uh, that they may get multiple emails with respect to that and registrations, but they only needed to complete that first one. So it just gave them the opportunity to front run that communication with their clients. Furthermore, after that first uh, couple of days with uh, obviously the data checks, integrity checks, um, and also the uh, communications and the data feeds, um, then they started on that checklist, as you can see, uh, with updating details with relevant third parties. So that was for external direct debits, for employer superannuation and uh, downloading the forms, uh, which they'd pre-done and had them completed, ready to go to complete the de uh, account details once they had them, and also with BPAY details, etc. The other thing that in their communications uh, that they were clear to clients is that they would receive one statement uh, comprised of two documents in the transition year. Um, and ran through exactly what the clients can expect post that uh, experience into, uh, into Panorama and clearly obviously prioritise their, uh, uh, their platinum clients or their, their A-class clients um, in terms of having that communication. Uh, looked for the opportunities where possible for uh, fee aggregation as well and had a, uh, a view of that in terms of family grouping. Um, so they've done a fair bit of pre-work with respect to that. And of course, they, uh, they utilise heavily, as David referred to, with the, uh, the BT Panorama training resources, and they ran a, a strong training program, uh, structured program, using those resources across their staff, making sure the right people were attending the right sessions uh, and running through that so they all had a, a good functional operational working knowledge of Panorama and all of the things that it could, uh, could actually do for them uh, prior to it becoming their fundamental um, uh, single platform. So some good information there. Uh, please uh, please take that and, and utilise that uh, in your preparations within your practice uh, for migration. And uh, we will now, I think, just move on to, uh, to our Q&A. And uh, just thank you very much with respect to that. So just make sure that those client details are up to date, as I said, uh, and ensure that that runs through. Um, we've included a couple of other uh, slides on the tail end of this uh, presentation for you to have a look at, which, as I said, talk about data uh, and other uh, factors for you to, uh, to consider and, and have a look through. And I'll let you um, have a look through those um, with respect to registration and mappings uh, at your leisure. Okay, so we might just now just finish on that one. I think uh, Matt and we'll open up to the questions and I'll work my way through them. We've built up to, uh, to 26 questions in, in total. Uh, so just let me start working through them uh, from the top. And uh, as I said, joined by David, uh, who you've just heard from, and also Jason Brown, Head of Account Management, and Gary Burford, our National Manager for platform development. And there's a couple in here for, uh, for all of you, I think, today. So uh, we'll have to make sure you're all uh, all on and ready. Um, so Shailia, uh, what's the situation of a client who has super app fund, wants to look at commencing an account-based pension late March, early April? That That's fine, absolutely fine. Uh, again, um, put that request in, it goes through into the system and where that is uh, in process, if it's not completed prior to the relevant migration tranche, 
then we can carry that forward and uh, they'll be picked up and, and migrated in tranche four, uh, which is scheduled for uh, late May at this stage. So that's okay. Uh, Laurel with cash transaction request freeze on 17th of March. Does it only apply to one-off requests? So pension payments and regular withdrawals usually paid around that time month won't be affected. Uh, that's correct. So the regular payments are all scheduled to go through uh, and any um, uh, cash transaction request uh, freeze will only be, as you said, for those one-offs. So that's fine. Uh, Charmaine, hopefully you got my message. I responded to, to try and uh, make those pictures a little bit bigger for you on full screen uh, as we went through. Um, Naomi, is there a way to cross-check the cost-based data information on migrated accounts to ensure accuracy? So just on that data across, Gary, I might just throw that one to you. If you could help Naomi there. Sure. Um, we're doing an enormous number of checks on the cost-based information to make sure it's accurate. But if you do want to check it again, um, you can. Uh, you can look at the cost-based information on the RAP desktop um, and, you know, cross-check it that way if you like against the cost base information showing on Panorama. Uh, but as I said, we're, we're auditing and re-auditing and rechecking all of those things so many times. So we're expecting it all line up, but you're welcome to have a look on RAP Desktop if you like. Excellent, thank you. And uh, while we've got you or, or David can chime in uh, if, if you prefer for, for Summer's question, uh, regarding a bulk reporting function on Panorama in the near future, if there'll be one for multiple client asset allocation reports downloaded at once. I'm happy to try this one, Dave, if you like. Okay. Cool, okay. So yes, we do have on our list of enhancements to um, extend out the bulk reporting on Panorama. Um, we're going through that based on advisor feedback and dealer group feedback, and um, we'll build out those enhancements um, after migration. Um, that's about all we can say on it for now. Um, we are gradually extending the list of reports based on user feedback. And as uh, David showed you on the first slide in this pack, we're, we're matching or improving or providing information in alternate ways. Um, so we'll keep that list of reporting available for you so you can see what the equivalents are or what the improvements are over time. Excellent, thank you. Um, Charlie, is there going to be a cash summary report like what was available on RAP in RAP? Um, I'll just refer back to that uh, initial uh, matrix table that we put up. Not a cash summary report as such, um, but certainly you can use the cash statement functionality um, that is on uh, my, on Panorama rather, and filter use the uh, the filters on there on the cash statement records by transaction type. So, for example, deposit and income, etc., and that will give you the same outcomes as that cash summary report. Uh, Bruce Shelton, what about wrap accounts that are not in migration list on purpose because of actions underway, such as rollovers, et cetera, in species transfers? Can we still action trades and withdrawals? Absolutely, so wrap remains open um, for those that, uh, that are not being migrated for a specified reason, and uh, you can actually absolutely do that, Bruce, that's fine. Uh, Richard uh, Marsh, one function wrap has was to run a a mock pre-trade outcome for CGT. So prior to doing rebalance, you'd know the CGT implications, what they might be. Um, from my knowledge, Pano didn't previously have this, but was told it was coming, is this the case? Uh, Panorama does have that functionality in the built within the, uh, embedded in the advisor portfolio functionality. So if you're running advisor portfolios, which are individual portfolios that you can run for clients and rebalance either regularly or ad hoc, and it certainly does give you that uh, pre-trade CGT position. Um, outside of that functionality, not available at this stage, but certainly something that uh, is on uh, the dashboard, the development dashboard. And uh, again, if we get uh, sufficient um, uh, demand for that, Richard, then uh, uh, demand um, equals supply in this case, and, uh, and it will get prioritised and, and delivered. But certainly have a look at the advisor portfolio functionality, very good functionality for managing your client portfolios, um, and, uh, and see if that uh, fits well for you. Uh, Kimberly McGrath asks, are geared investments included in Tranche 3 Migration Group? Yes, they are. Um, they will start to come through. Uh, and of course, BT Margin Lending is available now for new accounts on Panorama, with that being released, that functionality last year. Uh, Laurel, if opening a family trust account, can you confirm what information is needed? Um, you've got me on that one, Laurel, in terms of the individual information. Uh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but if you do run through the, uh, the application, as, uh, as David said online, It'll be very clear and follow the bouncing ball and tell you exactly what's required so that you won't miss anything uh, with respect to uh, the information that's required. 
Uh, Eric, uh, just so recap, no 12 month performance report available on Panorama, therefore also not an X plan. No, there is uh, historical performance reports available on Panorama, just not at the percentage level on the individual asset. Um, but all other reports are available historically and all data feeds will flow through to X plan. So you could actually run that report through your X plan if you have that report set up uh, in your reports feature within X plan. So all information, historical information going across there, Eric. Um, Charmaine, if a client does not have the internet, for example, can they open a new account offline? Yes, they can. And as Dave ran through, I think it was slide 19 from memory, uh, the offline solution in terms of printing that account uh, application form, getting that completed and following that process. Um, so have a look through that, Charmaine, that should explain that to you. Uh, Bruce, uh, again, just uh, why Panorama Contact Compact rather has a 2000 minimum cash account balance. Surely it should match BT Compact Wrap, I'm assuming there, with a $500 minimum fee in cash balance. Um, for those BT Wrap Compact, uh, BT Wrap Badge Compact uh, that are coming across, uh, they will have a $500 minimum fee, the migrated accounts. Uh, so that will take care of that. Uh, in terms of in the future for Panorama Contact Compact having a $2,000 minimum, uh, again, that goes on to our development schedule and uh, in terms of demand, uh, we'll look at prior the priority level of that and uh, and building that out um, should that demand uh, be sufficient, Bruce, but uh, appreciate your, uh, your feedback there. Sam, Panorama offers fee aggregation across a client uh, group. It would be great if Pano would allow tiered advice fee to be applied across a client group. Is this going to be possible at some stage soon? Uh, everything's possible, Sam, and that's the beauty of uh, Panorama and why we're moving to that platform, that the, the future-based uh, um, platform, because the infrastructure that it's built on allows pretty much everything to be developed um, versus uh, the, the sort of 25-year-old framework that uh, they're very successful and uh, and, uh, um, and a BT wrap was, was built on. So yes, everything's possible. We'll have a look at that and uh, and we'll check if that's on the uh, on the development pipeline as well. Sam, RAP allows an advisor to select Morningstar peer group indexes. These are not currently available in Pano. Can you please add these in? Um, you're right that they do have peer group indices in uh, Panorama. They are different to those on RAP in some instances. Uh, so hopefully what we've got there is suitable, but if not, Sam, please let us know um, and we'll, we'll take this as uh, letting us know and uh, and have another look. And uh, if you really want uh, anything in particular on there, please let us know so we can uh, add that feedback in. Uh, Kevin Yuen, uh, employer contributions redirected for a period of 12 months, but clients, employers have to manually redirect SG contributions within this period. Uh, is this correct? Uh, so Gary, I'll pass to you. And if so, are we able to obtain a list of clients that require redirecting their SG? Cool. Good question. Yes, that is correct. Uh, manu manually to redirect within 12 months. And uh, we can, during that 12 month period, we'll be running a series of follow ups with advisors, which in will include a client list as well of um, ones we're currently redirecting that you need to manually adjust before that 12 month period. Okay, Laurel has been emailing Janet Atkinson at BT. Uh, some updates through our data uh, spreadsheet with no response, hopefully receiving our emails. Uh, Laurel, I will make sure that that is checked out for you. Um, and if we haven't received anything, we'll get in touch with you straight away, but uh, they should be coming through. So we'll follow that through. Um, Kevin, just uh, uh, thanks for the presentation. You're most welcome, Kevin. Uh, remapping wrap access to Panorama, how do we go about doing this? Please contact your BT BDM. Uh, if you don't have a BDM or you haven't got a regular contact, please contact the client relations uh, line at the BT um, advisor line and they will put you through, tell them you need to speak to a BDM about your F code mapping for migration and they will absolutely get that connection made for you uh, and someone will contact you proactively then, Kevin. So please do that. Amanda, lovely to hear from you. Uh, Amanda, uh, uh, an old friend in Adelaide here where I'm based. Uh, we have a few wrap essentials within our business. What's the timing for these to be migrated? I uh, can confirm, Amanda, that Wrap Essentials uh, and Super Wrap Essentials will be migrated in May, scheduled for late May um, at this stage. And uh, so they will be coming across, uh, all the funds will be coming across um, and the structure of that will be uh, effectively uh, having a zero admin fee uh, for 12 months through to May 2022. Uh, obviously, they've got the reduced MER with the grandfathering taken out on one January. Um, and that should give 12 months then to run through a review cycle uh, to have a look at those clients in essentials and decide if uh, that's still where you want them to be in those funds, because they can be and they'll be made available to them. Um, but it gives a, an admin fee holiday while you're making that choice. 
it'll be mapped to Panorama Compact, so you'll have the full range of uh, uh, managed funds, managed accounts as well, and uh, term deposits. So good, uh, good functionality and things open to you. And five hundred dollar cash minimum will apply, um, obviously, to those uh, migrated essentials accounts. So uh, a good migration uh, story occurring there, and um, we'll make sure we get in touch with you here, uh, Amanda, through Tim Blackwood and and Henry Stewart and the team to uh, to update you on that as well. Kevin's got a client in BT Open Wrap. We expect to be in tranche two. However, their migration schedule date is this is unscheduled on Wrap. How do we confirm the client is expecting the first send? Kevin, that's an excellent question. And we did have a list that was going up on the desktop. Uh, unfortunately, we've run into a little technical hitch with respect to that, so that it's going to be a delay for that, which doesn't help you for the send for T2, because of course, I just said, thankfully, that's going starting to go out tomorrow. So um, if you want to uh, email us, again with your contact and uh, we can have a look at that particular client um, but we will have that that list up and running uh, by the end of February um, so you'll be able to see that but of course um, the client if they're getting their send should be getting that before that so we do apologize uh, all uh, all intents and purposes we were going to have that up for you um, but we've just run into a little hitch with respect to that uh, report so we'll be available for tranche three and for tranche two if you want to give us a call with the client details uh, perhaps that's the fastest way we can communicate that to you. Sam Stallone, uh, as a dealer, can I generate a fee revenue statement each month that shows all fees charged collected from individual client accounts in the month? Dave, is that uh, one you want to take on, fee reporting? I, I know under dealer group access in their business reports, there is a uh, section there for fee revenue statements. I, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, I, I haven't seen the, the output of that. I don't know if you can help. Gary at all, but uh, I'm assuming that will be what you're after. And that statements are produced if applicable, if there's fees being charged in a relevant month. So uh, I, I would say yes, but certainly follow up with us on that, Sam. Yeah, great. Excellent. Thank you. Naomi, uh, just that question, re clients unscheduled. The key to remember, Naomi, is if you've sent through uh, you've done all your mapping and your registration. Obviously, that's fine. You've done that with your BT um, uh, re representative. And you've done all the data uplift, any data uplift that was sent to you, um, if they're in T2, then they will be going through. Uh, if they're not going through uh, post-send, we'll be communicating that to you. Um, but you can certainly presume that um, if you've had them all prepped as, uh, as we've run through, then they will be going out. But again, apologies for that report uh, and that hitch we've had in getting that through. Uh, Stephen, question re Magellan partnership offer, slightly off topic, can you confirm if a client currently only holds funds and accepts a new partnership offer to take up closed class units, they will start incurring a $300 custodial HIN fee in BT Wrap Panorama? Uh, can't confirm that off the top of my head, Stephen, that's an excellent question, but we'll take that one on notice and we'll get back to you with respect to that, uh, how that actually works out and structures. Charmaine, with regards to rollover request for insurance premiums, that, will that automatically be moved across to Panorama or do we need to set it up again? Gary, do you want to just cover that one off for Charmaine? Sure. So I think this is talking about um, where you've got external insurance arrangements linked to a BT super account. So where you've got an enduring rollover, as they've call, they're called, you'll need to update your external insurer with your new Panorama super account details uh, to ensure that that continues after migration. Where you've got an internal BT life insurance policy against a BT wrap account, um, that will automatically be taken over. But where it's an external arrangement with an external insurer, you're going to have to provide them with their, the new um, superannuation account details. Excellent. Thanks, Gary. And just in the last couple of minutes, we'll, uh, we'll cover off as many of these as we can. Uh, pension payments, question from Lena Montoya regarding pension payments being paid before the migration. Absolutely, uh, all those are taken into account and pension payments will be paid um, prior uh, as required um, through to those pension recipients. So that's okay. Anthony's question around wrap F code mapping being automatic or manual. Uh, it is manual, it's something that we simply confirm with you. It can be done verbally over the phone and then uh, an email just to confirm that. Anthony, so if you haven't had that, please again call us and we will um, get someone in touch with you to make sure that happens. Melissa is looking for a client, list of clients in tranche two. Again, apologies, Melissa, for that list not being able to be up. Uh, if you want to give your BT rep a call, uh, we can do everything we can to get that list of clients through to you. Um, another one on F numbers, F codes, regular reports. Uh, have a look in the reporting section. Um, 
Okay, this is an interesting one from Nicole. Uh, well, they've been indicated within Panorama. So we've talked about them showing that it came from RAP uh, and, uh, and David showed where that would be on, uh, on the Panorama desktop. But will it show what account it came from? So for example, RAP Open or Essentials, will there be any badge information or, or type? Yeah, so the um, account number that they had in RAP is available on the new Panorama screen. So you'll be able to see which account they came from in RAP. Yeah. Yep. Okay, excellent. Um, Amanda, just a question around reporting. So I'll defer that one, Amanda, to uh, Tim and Henry uh, and make sure they get in touch with you. Uh, Cara, a quick one, Re, um, where would I find email templates to inform clients of the correspondence I'll be receiving from BT? If you go on to the BT Migration uh, Hub, Digital Hub, you'll be able to see uh, that correspondence uh, that'll be going out and also uh, be able to get the um, information and templates that you could use to send out to your clients as well. Um, Super app with QROP funds can be transferred. Yes, they will be migrated. So QROPs, we have the confirmation from HMRC in the UK that that will be done. Um, with offline apps, the client still needs to register to verify the linked bank accounts. Yes, if they don't have internet access, how do we solve this? There is an offline solution. Uh, I believe it's done through uh, phone and two-factor authentication. I think David is, is correct on that offline through his client relations. That process that's, that, that, that's correct, yes. Yep. Excellent, okay. Uh, Nicole, a bit of a specialist question there. Um, is BT Panorama able to take a special disability trust? I know exactly what you're talking about from my days running an advice practice. We had um, a client with one of those. Uh, we're trying to get this information from Vito Pano directly. We will take that offline, Nicole, for you and get that information back to you from our specialist team. Um, 12 month performance on individual funds be available after 12 months. Uh, yes, it is, Doug, just not at a percentage level uh, on the Panorama um, uh, desktop um, UI, but it will be available through your software, um, through XPan, for example, as that will flow through. Um, okay. I think that'll probably do us now. We're, we're fairly ahead of time. We've still got a lot of people online, but uh, any others that we that we run through uh, that we haven't got to, uh, rather. Um, uh, our final one from Julie, any date for Asgard migration? Uh, it's in planning mode now, Julie. Uh, that's all I can say, so no dates, unfortunately. Um, but as we develop that, uh, we'll do that, uh, get that information to you. But uh, we're very much focused at the moment on, uh, on successfully uh, uh, completing the migration for uh, our RAP clients to Panorama. So that uh, continues. We've started that journey with Tranche 1 successful in December. We have a, a touch under 50,000 client accounts moving from RAP to Panorama uh, with SENS going out to them uh, at the end of this week, as I mentioned. Um, so we're really excited to be continuing this journey with you to help you helping you with this information. Um, the information with respect to uh, the web address is, is certainly available there for you. Migrationhubbt.com.au, Panorama Migration. Uh, please look through it all. There's a whole heap of information. Please give us a call if you need anything else. For those of you who we haven't got to your questions, we will absolutely get them out to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much, David, for uh, for your time today and your presentation. Thank you, Gary uh, and Jason, for uh, for being on the panel. We didn't get to you today, Jace, but I know you're there, so thank you very much. And thank you to everybody for attending, and we hope that you found this a valuable use of your time. As I said, it's recorded, so anyone that couldn't get there, please direct them to that recording so they can have a look through. With that, I'll let you go for the day. Have a great day. Um, stay safe and well. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, all. Thanks, bye.